Now notation and calculus can actually be almost a topic unto itself and because two different people in history were just learning and discovering calculus the the notations have been all kind of jumbled but there are advantages to certain certain notations uh, as opposed to others so here we're going to talk about the advantage of the uh, the dy dx notation and what it can be used for and those are called differentials so let's just start with the fact that if I said y equals, x, y equals f of x, then notationally we could say if you take the derivative of both sides, dy dx is equal to f prime. Now technically dy over dx is not really a fraction because they're both infinitesimally small quantities. That's what they're supposed to stand for. So it's not really a fraction even though it looks like one. But there's an advantage to viewing the dy and the dx as separable and actually like variables themselves. So what's done is separa uh, separation of these, these terms here. So let's say separate and treat as variables. So by doing that, what I mean is you can you can isolate the dy by multiplying both sides by dx, and you can get that dy equals f prime of x times dx. Now this dy here is called the differential dy. And this dx is called the differential dx. Right, and so what this is going to allow us to do actually is, in in the last video we saw how the the linearization was used to help approximate a function, knowing its derivative. Here we're going to see that if we know the derivative and a small change in the value of x, this little equation here is going to allow us to anticipate or predict what the change in the y value will be, and it's going to do it in a very quick and painless way in terms of you know computation. So that's where we're going with this. Before we even do that, let me just do an example just for to get the mechanics done or the mechanics down. Let's say um, let's say you had uh, y equals x to the fifth plus uh, 37x. So I could ask if I want to ask a differential question, I could say find the differential dy. And then I could say use or evaluate the differential the differential dy for x equals one and uh, dx equals zero point one. All right, so in terms of computation, this is actually not hard to do. The differential dy would just be, now you can find dy dx and then swing over this dx like we did over here above, but you could just in one, one step isolate the dy. So dy, and, and treat this just like you're taking the derivative. dy equals 5x to the fourth plus 37, but then you need your dx. So there's the differential dy. If we want to use this to... Uh, if we want to find dy when x is 1 and dx is 0 0.1, we're just going to substitute those in. So I'll put in a 0 0.1 here, and I'll put in a 1 so dy uh, in, that, in that particular instant ends up evaluating to 5 plus 37 times 0 0.1 which is uh, 42 times uh, 0.1 and that ends up giving you 4.2 so what that tells me is if if this if we view this function y equals x to the fifth plus 37x I'm at the point 
x equals one. Uh, I'm at x equals one, which means I'm at one comma uh, one comma thirty eight. If I then move on the x-axis, if I if I if I change my x value by point one, meaning I go up to one point one. How did my y value change? The differential gives you a quick approximation. Apparently, apparently our y value goes up by about 4.2. Right? And that's what it tells us. And it's actually th this is actually all happening along the tangent line. So in the next, the next um, video, I'm going to show you sort of conceptually and graphically what's happening. But the point is the differential can be used to give us a quick, quick, approxima quick approximation of how the function change changes when our, our, um, our x changes in a particular way. Here I just want to give you kind of a conceptual understanding of what's happening when you use differentials. So we've got our standard picture here, our function y equals f of x. I got a point of tangency here where I would construct my tangent line or what we're now calling the linearization. So that y value would be f of a. And the derivative uh, or the slope of this function, uh, the slope of this tangent line would be uh, f prime of a. And so here's where I want you to think. <clears throat> In terms of the notation y equals f of x, we know that also that also means that uh, if I take the derivative of both sides, I can say that you know y equals f of x means that dy dx equals f prime of x. And we talked about, in the last video, the, the advantages of using those differentials there, because you can separate them and start treating them like variables. So, in this graph here, what I want to do is I want to note that this here, that's a change in the x direction. So let's, let's, call that, let's call that actually dx. Let's treat that like a variable there. That's dx. So that means that this point should be called a plus dx. And that means that I should call um, this here a plus dx comma f of a plus dx. So if I'm thinking about the actual change in the value of the function, right, as a went from a to a plus dx, then the actual function went from, so I'm going to use this triangle notation, the change in the value of the function is, well, it used to be uh, it used to be f of a, now it's f of a plus dx. So it's just the difference between right, that's the actual change in f. And I, I mean, how would you find that? You would just plug in uh, a plus dx, whatever that is, into your function. You'd plug in a in your function, and you'd subtract those values. Now, it's not always practical to do that. I mean, I guess strictly speaking, it is. We all have calculators, but in, in terms of a historical perspective here, the you can get away with doing something a little bit more efficient and and um, and just I guess less difficult uh, less difficult in terms of computing. And that is, you can say, well, I know this tangent line has slope f prime of a, but it also has slope dy dx. We're going to use that notation. So I'm going to call this here dy, right? And just thinking in terms of rise over run, the slope of that line is dy over dx, right? So dy, I want to say dy over dx is the slope of that line, but the slope of that line is also f prime of a. And so if I swing over this dx, I can say that dy is f prime of a times dx, and notice that black line, it's not actually how the function changed, right? The actual change in the value of the function was that blue line, which we just found exactly. This is the approximate, this is the approximate change in the value of f. So that's what the differential does. And notice it's it's completely related to the, the tangent line. 
right? We're using the tangent line there. So the thing to note is that dy, which we often write as df, just because they can be interchanged, is equal to f prime of a times dx, and that is the approximate change in the value of f as x changes from a to a plus dx. All right? And the key the key thing to take away from this is that there's another star. Since the values of the linearization uh, are easy to calculate, well, this allows us to estimate the change easily estimate the change in f when our dx is small. Right? If our dx is small, we can just plug that into our differential, our little differential equation there and find out how much would the y value, how much would the y value change roughly if our dx uh, changed by a certain amount. All right, so it kind of it kind of it's using the tangent line, but it's streamlining the process, and it's it put it's putting an emphasis on the change in the in the uh, in the outputs, and it's going to get us that answer really quickly, rather than making the equation of the tangent line, plugging in the values, and then finding that directly. This is going to get us there more quickly.